What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, there's a lot to talk about the Thunderbolts trailer. I think people are enjoying the trailer. They're giving it, they have some hopes, Brian. We're gonna be talking about the Thunderbolts trailer. The new this just won't let up, Brian. This just is it's just like they keep like the candle gets being blown out and somebody just keeps lighting it back up. Blade director. And we're going to get into the Agatha viewership, Brian. I saw the third episode. Again, it's not my thing. You can watch it and understand what's going on. The metaphors that they have for this show are, are, are pretty interesting to watch when, when they talk about this road that they're on. But let's get into the first thing. Th Thunderbolts, Brian. What do you think about the first trailer? I felt a little bit like a play the hits. Trailer? Yeah. A little bit. That's what it kind of felt like. Um, you get, you give some shine to the different characters. Obviously Florence Pugh gets the sort of the, she gets the voiceover. So she's kind of anointed as a bit of the lead, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And we've heard that she is kind of the, the lead thunderbolt, if you will. And that that's fine. No arguments there. Mm -hmm. Um, a little bit, you know, definitely some humor, definitely some humor to dark humor, even amidst the action. Yeah. Um, definitely felt like. What I mean by play the hits was there was definitely a couple of action shots where it felt like they were letting the heroes do things we had seen them do before. Like, for example, like Bucky using the same weapon he used to disable Nick Fury's SUV. Yeah. He uses that same exact weapon in the same exact way in this trailer. Uh, I'm sure there's new action in the actual movie, but yeah. there was, I felt like there was a little bit of that attempt to to bring things um, you know, back to where we had been, which is a recurring theme these days. We talked about it with the Brave New World trailer. Um, echoing Winter Soldier. So, you know, I I thought, you know, you have this sort of a semi-introduction to Sentry, even though you don't really see Sentry Sentry. You see a little bit of him sort of in lab rap form, I guess. Uh, and then you get some Julia Louis-Dreyfus, too, doing doing her Countess thing. So, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look bad. I mean, I don't think the movie's going to be bad. I just think, is it going to be consequential? Is it going to yeah. be huge? And I don't know that I walked out of that with this. I walked out of that with like, yeah, this will be derivative entertainment. I'm sure it'll move pretty quick and we'll probably have a decent time at the movies, but I don't know that we're going to walk out feeling like our problems are solved. I did notice, and I believed even before the Thunderbolts trailer that they were going to go back to a similar look that they had for Winter Soldier. They're going to give Bucky that older, classic Winter Soldier look. Yeah, which he definitely has, yeah. Yeah. But see, you know what? Thunderbolts and Captain America New World, uh, Brave, Brave New, New World. World. Brave New World. It's hard to differentiate the two when you think about it, Brian. Yeah, I agree. It's confusing, rap. You know, I don't know which movie is which when I'm watching it. How far apart are those two movies? Three months, February, May. Very interesting. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting to see if we feel the same. Like we're deja vu. Speaking of the Matrix, Brian, we were talking about. Let's, is it going to feel like watching a repeat or part two of the first movie, which will be Brave New World? Because we're going to get action, the same. You know what I'm saying, Brian? Even yeah. Yes, it's in the same world. But is it going to be, I've seen this already, not enough, not enough excitement, not enough stakes. What do you think? That could definitely be. I mean, you know, Marvel's, like I said, Marvel's trying to channel the nostalgia. They want people thinking about the good old days. They want people thinking more grounded, right? These are movies that are earthbound. You know, there's no cosmic, there's no funny purple space going on here. So, you know, that's what they want. Um, I also have to say to people, have you ever known Marvel to cut a bad trailer? Like, be honest. Yeah. They're pretty good at it. Yeah. Like, they're better than DC at making mm -hmm. trailers. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember like Wakanda Forever's, you know, first trailer when that hit? I mean, I'm not yeah. saying the movie was bad, but I'm saying when you watch the first teaser, you're like, give me this movie in my yeah. veins right now. I don't <laughs> think the movie was quite at that level. Yeah. Even like Quantum Mania, think about some of the cuts you got of like what Kang was doing in the trailer versus the movie you actually saw. Like, yeah. Marvel's very good at making trailers. They always have been, and they've gotten only better through time. So I wouldn't necessarily draw a straight line between how entertained you were by the two minutes here and or three minutes here and say like, that means the movie is going to be much better than I expected. Um, Eternals. Remember how excited we were after the first Eternals trailer? 
He's just saying, yeah. right? There's a pretty long list here of like, they do a pretty good job of, of getting you hooked, even if the content underneath isn't all that good. So, um, but you know, these are generally actors that people like, right? Like Florence Pugh, people generally like David Harbour generally like, obviously Sebastian Stan, we've been with him for a while. Um, you know, Julie Louis Dreyfus, I don't know in this role, and I'm still not totally convinced after this trailer, but I mean, her approval rating in general as an actress is pretty high. I, I think your assessment is spot on. Like, I think it's one of those where you'll be at the start of the summer and you'll be like, you walk out out of the movie and you'll probably be like, oh, that was good. Two hour, two, two and a half hours. I had a good time. Like, are you going to go back with the rest of the movies that are then coming behind it and see it two or three more times? I doubt it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think we'll be modestly happy. I will say this because to me, the stakes of this movie are not as high as Brave New World. Personally, just because Brave New World to me is falling in the legacy of the best Marvel franchise, yeah. I think that creates more reward and it creates more risk if that's yeah. not good. Thunderbolts yeah. is kind of its own thing. Yeah. This is why yeah. I kind of felt like Thunderbolts made more sense to me as a Disney Plus show, like a because it was sort of like its own. You could just keep doing this with these guys, these characters. Did it need to be a big tentpole movie? They obviously felt, yes, we'll see if they're right or not. So you're saying more in the vein of not necessarily the boys, but something like that. Yeah, a great comparison that it could have been it could have been Marvel's answer to that, and they could have just rolled it for three, four seasons, done a bunch of you know almost Mission Impossible style things that just heroes weren't necessary or required, or you know could be could bothered do. to do. Yeah, and like you just could have kept cranking that out, and everyone you know would have liked these characters and been happy with them. Like I said, that's why I think we would have viewed it a little bit differently. That's my personal opinion. I might be totally wrong when this movie comes out, but that's what it feels like to me. These series present a perfect opportunity for you to introduce other characters and then um, spin off from that into possibilities, uh, you know, depending on their popularity. I just think the idea that this is being given a slot that would tell you the Thunderbolts, we should view the Thunderbolts on par with the Avengers. We should view them on par with the X-Men. We should view them on par with the Justice League in terms of like team-ups. And I just don't see it, but I'll be there. But, yeah, right? yeah. Brian, my personality doesn't want to leave. He intends to see this through, possibly, possibly. <laughs> Possibly. We, he may be out and they're just going to do Blade, but just not with him. The support from World of Real, this comes, from, comes to us from superhero hype. James Samuel has recently met with Marvel Studios over the potential job. While nothing has officially been announced, the report mentions that Samuel impressed Marvel, potentially leading to a partnership. Brian. We don't have any hopes. They could say they have a big name director for Blade. Well, people concern. thought it was Jordan Peele. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Why did they, people think it was Jordan? Because Mahershala Peele? started following Jordan Peele on Instagram. Ah, yes, yes. Wow. <laughs> yes, I did read that. Um, what do you think of this? Uh announcement brian and we said based on what kevin said that it could be a problem there was pointing the fingers of this is what what this is what this movie's about to me that would i could have to me i would have i, I would have just been I, that's it it would have been over it would have been over at that point but it seems as if there is still a possibility that this movie will get made. And I've spoken to people who know people who have worked for these productions and there hasn't been any movement. There's been movement on other stuff. And it seems to be uh, a consistent thing with people moving on to other projects, Dustin Daniel Cranton some others but there hasn't been any movement on blade ryan now we get this possibility your thoughts well first off this is he's not confirmed number one number two is the report is several directors have been in to see kevin and in to see marvel and in to see disney i think 
there is some hypocrisy on display here. Because if you remember Kevin's line about this movie when um, they were they were out promoting recently Deadpool Wolverine, his line was, "Oh, we're we're just ta- we're taking our time. We're making sure we get this movie right. We're making sure we get this movie right." Do you know what this news tells you? <laughs> they want to shoot in November, no matter what. That's not taking your time to get the movie right. That's we're lined up to do this, and we've already sunk X amount of dollars into this without getting a movie made. We need to get someone in the chair to get the movie made. That's not taking your time to get it right. That's getting them. That's probably getting the movie wrong. It's just getting a movie made. And we're going to reboot anyway. So whatever. So I don't know why this movie is really getting made, Brian, outside of saving face, trying to keep the temperatures down. Yes. Yeah. Which is the wrong reason to make a movie. And I mean, it's just going to be, I hope it's not a disappointment. It seems like it will be, but it won't be, but we won't be surprised if it is. And we're going to be just saying, I told you so. Yeah. We're just going to be sad. (laughs) That's what we're going to be. It's like, this could have been avoided. Um, and by the way, since, uh, since Bodomeo, because we brought him up in the X-Men season two, Bodomeo was one of the people who took a pass at this movie. And he let slip something on social media that just made my blood boil. What do you think? So he basically insinuated that his version, <laughs> granted, you know, he's, he's, he's riding high professionally, at least from, or at least creatively, shouldn't say yeah. professionally, say creatively, yeah, after he's... X-Men season one. He said, he insinuated his version of Blade was basically the raid, except with vampires, which is exactly what I said yeah, on the yeah, show yeah, could yeah, work yeah, yeah, yeah. as this movie. And that just made me mad when I yeah, knew that yeah. there was a version of this that might have looked like that. And, we, and they, they scratched it. You know, who knows why, but I'm guessing Blade's daughter wasn't a major factor in, in a raid version of Blade. So I think I, I that's what it is, Brian, is that agenda. It feels like there's stuff here. So. I don't know. I, I just, I don't have much hope for this. I also, again, again, do not count on this being true. November is a long time in the world of Blade. We have seen so many things get to the five yard line and fall apart with this. Yeah. Until this movie is in the can and up on the screen, do not count on it being made or released. That is a strong possibility. We, we've been talking about for some time that I don't think this movie is going to get made with Mahershala. It will like, get made, but not with Mahershala and probably not anytime soon until they got a plan. Because at the end of the day, the the end result is Midnight Suns because you need some, another team outside of Avengers. You need another team outside of X-Men, although you need to prove that you can do what you did with Avengers with the X-Men so that you could possibly do Midnight Suns. All scenarios with this project are on the table. Full cancellation is on the table. Uh, This thing getting delayed again at the 11th hour on the table. I think there's worlds where they make this movie and it screens so unwatchable, they dump it in January. Uh, And (laughs) where most studios put their worst film. I think there's a possibility they make it and it's there and they send it to Disney Plus because that's all they can do with it. I think everything with this project is on the table. Yeah. Agatha, Brian. Viewership. Mm. I haven't quite looked into the numbers because I honestly don't really care too much, but the viewership will say whether we get more or not of this or is how pop how popular this show is brian so what how popular is this show because i'm not aware of any numbers right now what are the numbers for the viewership for agatha they're not great um so the premiere logged 9.3 million views within its first seven days that is well that's almost 2 million below where the premiere of the acolyte came in the acolyte wound up cratering in the subsequent episodes and was canceled after one season um it's also much lower than the season two premiere of loki which obviously was more acclaimed um 
not a good sign, I would say, that this that this show will find its own audience and will justify continuation, which goes to my point of other than Catherine Hahn is cool, um, I'm not really sure why this needed to happen. I'm still not sure after three episodes why it needed to happen. I mean, yeah, they said Mephisto's name in the show. Woo, yay. But like finally, right? <laughs> um, but episode three to me was a tough watch. And again, I feel like if it wasn't Marvel, I might have appreciated it more. But because it was, I kept looking and waiting for a little more connectivity and a little more advancement. Uh, and it kind of just wasn't. So I, you know, I, I did see I did see a report that it is far and away their less their least expensive series to date, which is pretty obvious when you watch mm -hmm. the show so far. There's not a lot of need for effects, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting given it's about witches. But so they probably don't take a bath on this if there is only one season and there's not high viewership. But if you're starting at nine million and the acolytes started at eleven, that's not a great sign for where this is probably headed, considering it's nine episodes. And by what the way, the acolyte the acolyte apparently cost over two hundred thirty million dollars. Oh yeah. So they took a hit on that. <laughs> I have questions about why they continue to pursue oh we're talking about like are we back to like the female-led yes yeah action yes, superhero yes, project yes, again yes, this has yes. been tough yeah we've gone through the list i mean I, I, th I mean, even ones that I thought of that were critically acclaimed, like, you know, Gina Carano did Haywire, directed by Steven Soderbergh. That's a really good movie. Yeah. I really watched it. Like, audience was, box office was low. Um, Charlize did, I think it's called Atomic Blonde. Yes. Uh, with the director of Deadpool, uh, mm -hmm. Deadpool 2. Like, that's a pretty good movie. Box office was weak. Like, it's just, we actually, it's funny. We got a trailer the other day for Ballerina, which was Anna Diarmas basically as the female John Wick. It's a John Wick spinoff. Keanu's ah, yes, uh, got yes, a small yes. role in it. Like yes. it's the same challenge. You know, we talked about it with Supergirl. Like, you know, the the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman is the exception, not the rule. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every once in a while, you get it. Like it does. You get one that does transcend. You get, you know, see, and it's tough because, like, you know, Hunger Games. It's Hunger Games. Like I know Jennifer Lawrence became a megastar off it, and it's a female led project, but the book audience might have been the bigger driver than her if that makes certain, sense so certain yeah it, it it's just really hard to pull this kind of thing off um i do think like i said if the budget was low then i would say this movie was at least or sorry this series was at least properly scaled mm -hmm. you know they're not going for the blockbuster response but if the audience is that low to start it kind of speaks to my point of like we may like this character in a supporting capacity for Scarlet Witch, but we don't care enough to spend nine weeks or eight weeks with this character as the lead of their own thing. And that's, you know, that's kind of Disney's fault if they can't, if they can't recognize and identify or, or elevate characters who can, you know, who can do that. How do you think, or what do you think this show needs to do in order to spark that, then that curiosity or interest? Well, res I mean, number one would be resurrect want to max him off and have Elizabeth Olsen be in the show somewhere. I mean, that helps. I mean, that, that, see, the problem is that brings you so close to the actual universe, right? But I think like that's, you're a Marvel show. That's what people, when they tune in, they're not looking for standalone generally. Um, yeah. So they're looking for the big reveal. Mm -hmm. You know, they're looking for Mephisto. They're looking with Mephisto being played by some huge A-list actor that nobody talked about. You know, like those are the things that get people kind of interested. Mm -hmm. And if it's not going to be that, the show has to be so tight, like Loki was, mm -hmm. that people really can buzz about it just on its own merit. Uh, but I think people underestimate, like, you know, Tom Hiddleston was a star. Like, Loki was a beloved character before yeah. that series started. Yeah. And then they bring Kang into the finale, and it's kind of like, yeah, like, this is, this is happening. This matters. And, like, Catherine Hahn is great. Like, Catherine Hahn has never been bad, but, like, I just don't think the character of Agatha, I don't think you walked out of WandaVision saying, God, if only I had four more episodes of just Agatha. It's funny, we're having this discussion. Penguin is a hit. Agatha, it would seem, is not. Yeah. Both actors are very capable. Both actors did a really good job in the role. 
but one captivated, right? The Colin Farrell penguin captivates you in the Batman. Agatha's fun. It's, it's derivative. It's light, but it doesn't hold you in my opinion. And that's the difference. I do. When I do watch the show, because it's hard for me to really pay attention sometimes to it, but I have it and I'm playing and I'm watching it and I'm listening to it while I'm doing other stuff. I do like the way they sort of create these little um, questions that you may not get answered now. I like the way they start setting up things for that reveal, whatever they, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. But outside of that, uh, it's just a lot of fluff for me. Yeah, well, you know, in some ways, maybe the comp is something like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., where it's like, you know, that show danced around the edges of the universe, but because they couldn't really use the universe itself, it never totally felt like it mattered. Like, you know, they just couldn't get the big names in, you know, like it's like Lady Sif made an appearance, you know, like that's, you know, it's nice. Jamie Alexander's great, but like, you, you know, you just, you couldn't get even the cameo. I mean, at least... I don't think I don't know the ballerina will be a mega hit, but at least John Wick shows up in the trailer. He's in the movie. It's like a candle's yeah. candle's right there. Like, okay, like he's at least gonna try to help this, you know, and, and they're not gonna be like it's in the world of him. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I just I think this is this is looking like one season and done, which is probably what I would have predicted from the start. Brian, A Force will never get done. <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the thunderbolts trailer i thought it looked pretty interesting by the way can i just say that the, i texted you this mm-hmm. there's been a big kerfuffle about the poster but in my opinion it's the wrong angle so everyone's obsessed with there's a shot of century and like does lewis pullman have six fingers or not and apparently it's just like a trick of the eye no. yeah the story of the poster is Florence Pugh's expression. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that yeah. to me is like, if this movie is bad, she on that poster looks so grumpy. You're just going to meme that shot. But I'm just telling you, keep an eye on that if this movie winds up It'll not It'll be being associated great. with their with, with the yep. demise, with yeah. their failure. It'll be associated <laughs> with that. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Blade possibility of this movie being beginning to be shot in November. Uh, We supposedly have some people interested in in, in the job. Uh, Whether we get it or not, we'll have to wait and see because nothing is written in stone yet. Nothing has been written in stone it's been written in pencil. Everything has been written in pencil with Blade. So we got to see um, when they, like Brian said, if this is this movie is not on 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 the screen, we can't assume that this movie is going to be done. Uh, and let us know what you guys think of Agatha. Are you guys watching it? We are watching it, but it's you know, we're watching it for the show and see what happens. Um, again, I am a little bit curious as to some of the things that they set up so the reveal better be interesting um but other than that there's really no real excitement for this man and it's just another attempt at at, 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 i don't know what they're trying to do but um yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this and we'll see you next time on the nerd gen report the show goes on